right, so we are now on day 26 of Kamala Harris dodging the media. The vice president has not given a single interview, like a real sit down back and forth or an open press conference where she takes, you know, 15 or 20 questions one after the other. She's done a couple of things on the tarmac, um, but it's a new day and she's at the top of the ticket. She did, however, do a sit down chat with her running mate where they grilled each other on some really tough questions. Watch this. Like I have white guy tacos and what like that black, like mayonnaise and tuna. What are you doing? Pretty much ground beef and cheese. That's and, okay. Do yeah. you put any flavor in it? Uh, no. Oh. Um, here's the deal. <laughs> <laughs> no, they said to be careful and let her know this that black pepper is the top of the spice level in Minnesota. You know. So Tim, yeah. what's your relationship to music? Yeah. For me, the transformational piece of music was Bruce Springsteen's The River, okay. which is a journey. You know. I'm more of a hip-hop girl. <laughs> I called you, Tim. Yes. You didn't answer, Tim. It popped up, and we didn't recognize the uh, the caller ID, and it went to, uh, <laughs> it went to voicemail. Yeah, never answer the phone if you don't know who's on it. I don't. Uh, Governor Waltz's White Guy Tacos line is cooking up some online drama because folks discovered an old tweet of his that showed that he won an award <laughs> over his turkey taco hot dish, uh, which contains green chilies, taco sauce, chili powder, all hotter than the black pepper that he says he can't handle the spice level of. And get this, Tim Waltz's dog has now granted more interviews than Kamala Harris. Vogue magazine putting a spotlight on Waltz's rescue dog, Scout, which happens to be the same name of my dog. Uh, and he did an interview where they asked the pooch, quote, what is your human's worst habit? And he said, the guy loves Diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> so, I mean, it kind of, Judge, reminds me of, like, the what's your favorite ice cream flavor questions yeah, for Joe, Joe Biden. Biden, all of which would feel sort of cute and interesting if we weren't dealing with a lot of serious things that we haven't had any answers to quite yet. Yeah, well, clearly her team believes that there is a risk to sending her out there and having her answer questions, that the downside is too great. And uh, that's why they think that probably the the less you see of Kamala, the more you're going to like her. Uh, but in the end, um, we've only got 81 days left. Yeah. And next week is all scripted. She may sit down and give an interview after that. And then there's the debate. And uh, my concern is that... She's not confident enough, her team is not confident enough to answer any questions. The woman is vice president of the United States of America. What is she afraid of? What is her team afraid of? This is like Joe Biden number two. I mean, not only is she his co-pilot, co but they're, they're bubble wrapping her. They may not be keeping her in the basement, but it's the same thing. And they're interviewing each other instead of, you know, it, it, talking to the American people about things we're worried about. He's talking about his favorite spices. Americans are trying to afford those spices. You know, the absurdity of it all is, is so disappointing. But at the same time, it speaks to where we are. I think a lot of young people now are not even concerned with a long-form interview. They take their phone and they just scroll yep. and they look for the meme or they look for the whatever it is on yeah, Instagram, that's, yeah, and that's right. how they get their news. They're not going to sit down for the long-form anyway. Yeah, and, and, you know, some of her supporters are arguing, Jessica, that, you know, it doesn't really matter. You don't have to talk to anyone. You don't have to answer questions of anyone. You know, what are they? You know, Trump goes out, he talks to CBS, talks to ABC, talks to NBC, goes on all these different things. He's not... He, he doesn't care when people throw questions at him, and he's, he's willing to face them. I don't understand, as, as the judge says, she's the vice president of the United States. I mean, she's a smart woman. Go answer the questions. What's so hard? Well, Trump doesn't actually dialogue with anyone in a way that exposes any details of his plans. You know, he says, I, I'm going to deport them all. And no one follows up and says, well, how are you actually going to round up those millions of people? That's not true. Are, yes, he's done is. CNN. He's, he's done all kinds done, of... He's done pretty much every I'm outlet. In this, outlet he in hasn't gone campaign, to an answer question. He calls these press conferences, and he rants for upwards of an hour. And then he takes and, questions. And he, but he doesn't answer them in a, any sort of... Well, that's up of, to the American people yeah, to decide. Exactly. Or the press. The question. Okay. Or the press, but he's doing the it. The point about what Kamala is doing is that we have 81 days left. She will absolutely be sitting down, but she doesn't need to do it right now. Her supporters are not upset about it. Even people who are in the middle are not upset about it. She's giving speeches. She's telling people what she stands for. And that video with Governor Walls was charming. They were getting to know <laughs> it. Well, 
It might not be to you, no, but to millions of people it would. But, because we wouldn't have this kind of election right now where Kamala Harris is trending this way and Donald Trump is trending this way if what they're doing wasn't working. Wherever you get your polls, 538, Real Clear, The Economist, The Cook Political Report, any of it, Kamala Harris is trending in the right direction. Well, that's and true. that's because of her approach to this. And not so, so if it's not feel, broke, don't fix it. And well, I, you know, I, I, I get that. that. that works? But Joey, what I'm more worried about really is what the judge said, that, that people don't really care, that they're happy with, you know, a TikTok meme version of someone and then they're going to go in and, and vote for that's that the, That's the absolute fear I have every day. I, I don't know where people are on, on issues. I can tell you this, like, she, Kamala Harris has a run against Donald Trump and Joe Biden. And that's going to be really hard to do. And the more questions she answers, the harder it gets to do that because she has been his vice president. So how do you do that? You do it by embracing Trump's ideas like child tax credit, no taxing tips. You do it by ignoring your own progressive legacy. And you do it by continuing to court the far left progressives with whatever red meat you can put out there. One of those pieces of red meat is someone like Tim Waltz, who cloaks himself in this fake Midwestern conservative personality while putting tampons in boys' bathrooms, calling the censor the First Amendment, allowing riot, riots, but jailing business owners a few months later during COVID. Uh, you know, I was going to really make fun of him because I think about that movie, The Campaign, where Zach Galifianakis gets turned into the perfect candidate. But as soon as you take a look at him, you see, like, they even take his dogs away and give him better dogs. And I was going to be like, you know, a very generic scout name, but then you said that was your dog's name, so I couldn't <laughs> say that. But that's what he is. I mean, they're trying to paint him as this perfect Midwesterner when he's nothing less than a liar. And you know what? I, I saved my words on him for weeks mm -hmm. until I saw a video of him on the House Veterans Affairs Committee, one that I served on with him as a staffer, looking at Gold Star families and saying, when they come back from war like I came back, without the mental health uh, uh, assets or resources they need, bro, you were on a deployment in southern Italy. Put me on that deployment. You can, I mean, like, what are you talking about? What was your mental health needs coming back from southern Italy? I'm not saying there weren't any, but maybe answer some questions on that because you looked at a gold star family and tried to put yourself in their sons and daughters shoes. That's what kind of person you are. That's who she picked to go with her, not because of any ability to make good decisions. Here's the deal. Jessica and I were talking about this in the green room a little bit. President Trump is not going to say things that make you feel good. He's not going to say things that make you feel heard and seen, but he might not send your son to war for no good reason. He might not bankrupt your business for no good reason. He might get the cost of energy down. He might not need to give you a fake $25,000 to go buy a house so that everybody else can outbid you and now the, the cost of housing goes up. He might not say the only way to bring down the cost of groceries is to take over the food industry. He might say $2 diesel does a lot to take care of the price of groceries. Mm -hmm. So I don't care what he says about the Medal of Freedom or the Medal of Honor. I don't care what, uh, what words are taken out of context or even left in context. He can be a rotten human being for all I care. Do the policies that work that you did the first time around and you have my vote. I have no idea if the rest of America is on board with that. But do you, you do know that their plans have been evaluated and Trump's is more inflationary. You, Moody's did that. Trump you spent, do know that Trump the GDP the money is after better COVID. under I've Biden. I've criticized him for that, but, but there's that no way said, Kamala Harris. The last Harris. Trump plan put $1,500 back in every middle-class family's pocket with the tax cuts. But, Greg, we want to make sure we get you in. Sure. Well, just remember the same people who told America that Joe was sharp as a tack are now telling you that Kamala is sharp as a tack. So remember that. Her approach, Kamala's approach right now is a calculated retreat because she prefers and her campaign prefers that she live in the world of the first impression because it's the basket case theory. The more you know about her, the less you want to know about her. And, you, and I'm telling you, Watch that again. She is not a confident candidate. It's true. And you're right. Waltz is a, he's the more you know about him, you realize they did not vet this guy. <laughs> yep. I mean, his campaign cover up of his horrible DEI. DUI. DUI yep. is what did I say? <laughs> DEI. A little obsessed. Uh, same thing. Same, same. Uh, if that's not disqualifying, <laughs> I don't know what is. He actually exploited his military background to cover up his crime. 
He said it was related to his service and that he actually wasn't drunk. He just misheard the mm. instructions and the drunk test. He blew a super high level. It was like, you know, 0.2, driving 100 miles an hour. And then when he's running for office, he said that he wasn't drunk. I mean, this guy has creep written all over it. He, he created a snitch line, but lies about his own, his, his personal infractions. He doesn't even own up to it. You know, this is a guy who pushes a hoax about a sex on a couch. And then the closer you look at him, he's, he's a creepy cuck. What? That's it. You're too <laughs> I'll tell you what, talk break. better in the break. All right, so coming up next, the pro Hamas agitators seem to be getting a dry run for the DNC, and President Biden and Kamala Harris get heckled at their event. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.